Welcome back everyone. We're nearing the end of this series, so to say, and our shopping cart application here looks really good already. We will get our products here and can add multiple products to the cart. Then we can go to our shopping cart, we can check out. We can enter some test data here then like this. Enter any credit card number here and then a valid expiry date, any CVC and if I hit buy and buy now now, well then we're buying this. And of course, technically all we're doing here is making a charge with Stripe and then we're clearing the shopping cart. So one big thing that is certainly missing is kind of while well, storing the order. Right now, well, if the customer purchases something, we're not informed, we can't see the order. It's not stored in our database, therefore, yes, we get the money, but the customer isn't getting that much and we have no way of knowing what the customer actually bought. Therefore, I want to conclude this series by making sure that we're actually storing the purchase in the database, that we're storing an order. And yes, I know you could add thousands of other things. You could add a whole admin dashboard, which allows us to create products and so on. But keep in mind, this is a series about creating a shopping cart. And for me, a shopping cart means adding items to the cart, buying something and then storing the order. So that's what I'm focusing on next. So that we're actually able to see what the customer purchased. Now, since I was talking about orders all the time, that's what I'll start with. I'll create a new order. For that, I'll head over in my project. And here I'll open up my terminal, which again is just a normal terminal, just included here in my IDE. And navigate it into my project folder. I'll use the artisan command line tool to make a new model. And the model I wanna create is the order model, which yeah allows me well to store orders. I will also store a migration file with the minus M tag here to make sure that I can configure the database in a way I need it to be configured. So I'll hit enter and that will create this migration for me. I'll just bring down this window here and then we can have a look at our newly created file. We got this order file here and in the database folder under migrations, we got our migrations file here, which allows us to configure the database. I'll start in this order migration file here. And let's think about what an order should actually contain or how we want to store an order. I think it should certainly contain a reference to the customer who made this order. So I will store an integer pointing to a user ID. And for that, of course, we will need to force the user to log in before buying something. Currently, remember, it's anonymous, so everyone is able to hit checkout, but we will need to, ch to change this. The next step is, I also want to store the cart. And you could create a whole lot of different tables, storing the individual items off the cart and so on. But here, I'll make it easy. I'm going to serialize this card, which basically means I'll use a PHP function, which takes my model, my object, my PHP object, and converts it into a string. And then I also get a function to deserialize it uh, later on when I need it again. That way I'm able to actually store this card in the same, well, table as my order are in, and I don't need to create thousands of different tables. So that will be a text field because it will contain a string or a long string in the end. And I'll name it cart. Again, this will hold my serialized object and you will see what I mean with that later on. The next field I want to have is the user address. Now here, of course, you could have multiple fields too, one for the city, one for the street. But to keep it simple here, I'll have one single field address where I assume that everything is entered. And that matches my checkout form where I also have only one address uh, line. The next field I wanna store is the name of the customer because the customer or the user to which I'm linking with this user ID only has an email and a password. Remember, that's how we set up the user here in the user migration file. So in order to get the name of the customer, which I would need to put it on the, well, shipping batch I put on, to, on the package I ship, for example, in order to get that name, I do have this extra form field in the checkout form and I wanna store the name here. So this will be a string name. Now, finally, there's an extra field 
which will hold my payment ID. And what does payment ID mean? Well, whenever I make a purchase on Stripe, this payment has an ID. And I'm going to show you that in my Stripe account. So if I head over to Stripe here, and I should already be logged in. Yes, I can open my dashboard. And in this dashboard, you see I made a bunch of testing purchases uh, yesterday, basically. I can hit where I can have a look at my payments here at the transaction payments. And then you see all the test charges I made. And if I click on one of the charges, you basically see this ID here. Now that ID is important because this ID will also be sent with the reply to my SDK, to my PHP function, which makes the charge as a response. So I can store this ID on my server or in the database. And I want to store it here so that I'm able to match payments with orders. So that I see in my Stripe account, I got this payment and I can see, okay, that's this ID. Have a look at my own orders table here and see the well, same ID to match the order and the payment. So that's just something which allows me to do that matching. With that, my orders table is set up. And the next step is of course, to work on the order model here. In the order model, I want to set up a relation to the user because I know that each order will be related to one user. So I can basically set up this relation here. I have my user and I know that, well, again, each order has one user. So this will be a one to many relationship because each user may have many orders. So I set up belongs to here because, because again, each order belongs to one user. So this belongs to app user. And of course, on the other hand, in the user model here, I'll also create a new function, a new relation where I have many orders, which is why this is plural. And here I will return this has many. And then here I want to have app order. So refer to my order object. With that, I got this relation set up in the way I needed to have set up. So with that, the order model is set up, the order table is set up. That's a huge important first step. The next step, of course, is to then go to the product controller and use this orders object or this order model to actually save the order once the user makes the purchase. That will be the next step. So in order to save this order whenever we make a purchase, I'm going to go to my product controller here. And here you can see my well API key and so on. And I'm going to change this uh, after recording this video, of course. And here currently what we're doing is we're just cleaning or clearing the cart. The session is deleted or the session forgets the cart. So that's all we're doing. We're not saving the order. So before clearing the cart or clearing the session cart here, I should save this order. Of course, the right place to save the order though is not here, but instead it's here in this try block because I only want to save an order if we are successful with the card and or with the charge, excuse me. So I certainly don't want to do it here because we're reaching this point here, no matter if we're successfully charging or not. I also said that this charge create method here will give us a response, which for example, contains the payment ID. So in order to use this, I'm going to assign this to a variable charge. This will contain the response Stripe sends me back. With that, I can now create a new order here. For that, of course, I'll first need to import it. So I'm going to add an import to app order up here to be able to use the order object. And then down here in the post checkout function again in the try block after well, making the charge here, I'm going to create a new order like that. Now I could also mass assign my values here if I configured the model appropriately, but here I'll do it one by one to make this as explicit as possible. So my order will store the cart. Remember, that's how I set up this migration file. I want to store the whole cart. For that, I will basically simply serialize my card. I'm already extracting it up here. 
So all I have to do here is I'll call the PHP function serialized. That's a built-in PHP function, has nothing to do with Laravel. And I'll, well, serialize my card here. That will take my PHP object, convert it into a string, and then basically store that string in the database. And later on, I'll have the unserialized method here, which basically knows how to take that string and create the old object again. That's a convenient way of, well, storing an object in a database. The next step is I also want to set the address like this. And for that, I need to get the address in the first place. Well, if we have a look at our view, at the checkout view here in the shop, you see we have this address input, though currently the input has no name, so we can't really use it on the server. So I'm going to assign this name attribute here and set this equal to address. And whilst I'm on it, I also want to assign the name attribute to this, well, name input field here where I fetched the name of the customer because I'll use store that too. I'll just name this input name. So with these two name attributes assigned to the inputs, I can go back to my product controller and starting with the address, I can take my request, which I inject into this controller action here and simply retrieve an input and the first input I want to retrieve here is of course the address. And then I'm going to duplicate this. And I also want to fetch the name here and store the username like this, the name of the customer. So the next thing I want to store here is the payment ID. So payment ID like that. And as I said, I can get this from this response I'm getting when making the charge. And here I'll simply have an ID field where I can retrieve this payment ID from. And how do I know that I can retrieve it from the ID field here? Well, from the Stripe documentation. You can find a detailed documentation of how this response looks like there, and then you'll see that actually the ID field will hold the payment ID. So with the order object configured here, I then of course need to create the relation or make the mapping between this order and the appropriate user. I know that the appropriate user will be the logged in user. Remember, currently I'm not forcing the user to log in, so that will definitely be the next step. But here, I'll already assume that the user is logged in. I'll retrieve the logged in user on the off facade like this. And in order to be able to use this, I'll need to, go, need to go to the top of my file and I'll add the import to this facade just by adding use off here. Without that, we, could, uh, we would get an error. With that in place, I can retrieve the logged in user like that. And then on that user, I want to access the orders. And here I need parentheses after orders because I want to build a query, because I want to, well, make a query to the database. I want to save something to the database. And the something I want to save is the order. That is how you save related objects to the database. First access the, well, the user in this case, access the orders of the user, and then save a new order on this, well, orders connection. With that, I'm actually saving the order. Though currently we would get an error if we try to check out what's not being logged in because off user would then be null and therefore we couldn't successfully save this. Therefore we would get an error. But since, well, I can log in and see if that works theoretically, I want to see if it, well, works theoretically. So let's have a look. As a first step, I'll need to migrate my orders table here or my, yeah, order migration file to the database. So since I'm using Homestat here, I have a terminal navigated into Homestat and, uh, Homestat and into the project folder. And there I'm running PHP artisan migrate like that. So that created my orders table. And I also brought up SQL Pro here, which allows me to have a look at this database. As you can see, here's the orders table empty right now. Here we got the products, the users I created and so on. So with that, I can go back to my shopping cart application, add an item to the cart. And now remember, I need to sign in, otherwise I would get an error. So I will quickly do that. And later on, of course, we will add a functionality to force the user to sign in. So I'll sign in, go to shopping cart here, click on checkout. Now enter some dummy data, whatever you like. 
Also, we need a credit card number. A convenient way to get one is to head over to stripe.com and then go to their documentation. And here in the very first example, we get a dummy credit card number we can use. Then enter any expiration date, as long as it is in the future, any CVC code, click buy now. And looks good. Let's have a look at the database. If I update this table, you see we got a new order here. And I'll increase the window size here a bit. As you can see, we got, well, the date, the user ID, one, which is the right user, the address, the name, the payment ID here, which is this ID I mentioned earlier, stored in the Stripe account. And we also got this card field. If we have a look here, that's exactly what I meant. We have this strange looking string, which basically just is our card object from before converted to a string and PHP will be able to, well, reconvert that to a card object if we tell it to do so, which we'll do later on. With that, I will have the possibility to make words and to store them in the database, which is a great improvement. Of course, still, we have this bug that only logged in users can make a purchase or well, can make it without getting errors, but technically everyone can still go to the checkout page right now. And also, well, we're not really showing the user the purchase anywhere. It would be nice if we go to, let's say, the user profile to see all our purchases here. So that will be the two things I'll work on next.